Welcome to this week's edition of the Health Department Roundtable. I'm your host, Chris Schultz, uh, current chair of the Board of Health. And with me is our health director, Marty Golightly, and our public health nurse, Lindsay Wright. Um, thank you both for joining me today. Hey, thank, thank you. you. So uh, we're noticing a, um, an uptick um, in numbers. Um, where, where are we as of today? And, uh, and do we have any information on what's contributing to that rise? Uh, 46 active cases as of right now. 55. It's, it's 55. So it, see, that's how fast it can change. It literally <laughs> was 46 at 8 o'clock this morning. And throughout the day, we gained nine more. And that's the kind of thing we're up against. Also, we can't give you an accurate number right now for quarantines. Am I right in that? Because we're still trying to... We're still contact tracing. Figure out a couple of the positive cases. So one of the biggest things you can do for us to help facilitate this is to, if you're pending test results, stay home. Uh, if you have symptoms, stay home. If you've known you're a, a close contact, stay home. Um, that really makes it a lot easier on us, a lot easier on your neighbors, your classmates, uh, and the other people of the town so that they don't you know, necessarily have to quarantine um, because you, you helped us out and stayed home. And I do wanna talk about the almost 1,900 cases reported Sunday evening, almost 1,500 cases reported today. <clears throat> the vast majority, it's like 65% under the age of 49. Um, is that statistically significant? Yes. Do I have a working theory? It's kind of difficult to say. Could it be a combination of variants and that's the population with the least amount of vaccinations? Possibly. Could it be, could it be from uh, an easing of restrictions? Also possibly. These things are really not as cut and dry as a lot of people seem to think. Um, but the one thing we do know for certain is that Staying home when you're sick, wearing your mask when you're out in public, avoiding large groups, and making sure that our positive cases are isolated are, are, the, are our best countermeasures still. I wish I had a crystal ball, and I wish I knew for certain that we would get a lot more shots done and that we'd have, be able to have a, a better summer, but I'm, I'm just not sure yet. I'll throw it over to Lindsay because I know she has a lot to add on that. No, just keep, we can see the finish line. We are so close, just, just let us keep doing our thing with vaccine well, vaccines we're working on the homebound you know if you know of a resident or you are a homebound resident call we have a list wear your mask masks sorry keep our distance and we it's we are seeing the end hopefully but we have to be careful and we can't let our guard down we do need to be wary of this current uptick and yeah, it's, it's the variants it may be because of the population that's getting it or not vaccinated we don't we don't know but we do need to be wary. And I do want to talk about vaccines real quick, if you'll indulge me for a second. Our, we have never stopped the fight to try to get the town more vaccine to put into the arms of our residents here locally. Um, there is, for whatever reason, there is great reluctance on the part of the state to send uh, vaccine to local boards and to local health departments to actually do that. Uh, we've had plans in places for over a decade in this town since I've been here, I don't even know how many times we reviewed the plan. We reviewed it all summer. We reviewed it all winter. Uh, and we reviewed it again re recently. And we're going to keep reviewing it because this t uh, coming up at the end of this year, maybe the start of next year, we're going to be able to vaccinate some children, some of those ages under 18. Um, and we want to have a very robust plan uh, to do that locally as well. So we are going to continue to advocate fiercely to be able to perform vaccination clinics locally. I don't know if that's going to be fruitful, but it will not be for a lack of effort on our part to be as vocal as we can to get those shots in the arms of residents in-house. Uh, like Lindsay said, please call us or call the state's in-home vaccination program uh, and we'll put you on our list. And as soon as we have specific doses set aside for that, we will we'll get them to you. This week we're doing second dose clinics only, um, primarily for our uh, senior housing group. And, you know, the, we look forward to this. This is our time where our paramedics and nurses staff that have trained so hard and that are our subject matter experts and uh, I, that I get to hang around with a lot, they get to go to those homes, they get to perform, they get to do the things that they know they're good at. And it's a joy to watch. And I, I'd, like to, I'd like to watch it a lot more, but 
Sorry, I rambled. Forgive me, Chris. No, that's quite all right. And um, if I'm not mistaken, Mon no, April 5th is when the next group becomes eligible for shots. Uh, yes. yes. April 5th and everybody on April 19th. Right. Um, so really, we're looking at April 19th, and that's not that that's 21 days from now that's three weeks that's that's a nothing in, in the grand scheme of things that's literally nothing um so i hope that these planners for these vaccination clinics have taken this seriously and that have planned for the large ups uh, uptick in eligibility i also hope that the large uptick in the people that are eligible does not undercut those who have not yet got it meaning are 55 and older population with more comorbidities or are 45 and older uh, with comorbidities um, that just because you know everyone's eligible we should not lose focus on uh, that population that you know needs it just as bad as everybody else and that that, that we know can lead to um, more negative outcomes if they get COVID. Mm -hmm. That was a long answer to a simple question I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's worth mentioning that we remind people that as we're moving through the phases of reopening, that um, that's a sliding scale that can move backwards if our numbers continue to, to rise. It absolutely can. And, and the board is, is in a position to make some of those backward recommendations, too. So um, none of us want that. All of us want restaurants open. All of us want to go to Founders Day. All of us want to go. Uh, to road races and to do the things that we, we like to do as much as possible. So, um, and it only works if we're all on the same page on this. Help us help you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I, I think that's uh, all for our updates this week. And then Can I give one more real quick? Yeah. So not COVID related, but health department related. Uh, today we got five bids for our new trash contract and they are all currently under review. Um, so we look forward to uh, hopefully an increase in service to the town starting on July 1st. Excellent. And on that note, we should mention that the compost site will be uh, open for uh, business this Saturday, right? Yes. April 3rd. We'll have to double check that on the website. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a, I have the schedule right here. Just pull that. April, yes, April 3rd. You're right. April 3rd, come on down, bring your stuff. Uh, there should be enough uh, uh, ground up mulch up there too if you have to pick some, if you want to pick some up. We had all, we had the piles turned over and grinded this year. So there's a lot of stuff up there. Uh, all the fees for the TVs and microwaves and whatnot are all listed up there too. Please, those are volunteers up there. Treat them kindly, please. And if you have any uh, questions, uh, Feel free to contact either the health department um, or the uh, Abington Board of Health's webpage, uh, Facebook page, I'm sorry, or you can contact us directly through the town's website. Um, I should mention also, I think we mentioned last week, uh, ticks are out already. Um, so please be careful. Lyme disease is yet another fun thing that we don't want to play around with. So pick yourself. And I've heard, and, and Lindsay, I'll, I'll double check with you. Um, it takes a tick 48 hours to transmit Lyme disease is what I've heard. Does that sound? I don't know the exact time frame about from bite to transmission. I, that is something I can look up and give you an answer. Yeah. However, if you see a tick on yourself, be sure that if when you take it out, you're getting all of it. A lot of people will pull and leave part of um, the head still embedded and you can end up still having issues. Um, and primary care doctor or ER or urgent care uh, can give you a single dose prophylactically. If you knew in the morning you didn't have it and you find it, you can go get a uh, dose of antibiotics to try to prevent uh, any issues. But make sure when you are pulling ticks off, you get the entire tick. That is a bit of, a, bit of advice for <laughs> And please, for the love of God, don't use a match or Vaseline to, <laughs> to get a tick off. That's, that's going to work. Um, all right. Well, thank you once again for joining me today for our update. And uh, we'll be back next week with more exciting information. Stay safe, wear your masks, and um, we'll see you next week. <laughs>